Welcome back. Next, let's take a look at their inner join. So it's very similar to the left join that we've seen in the previous video, and the syntax is the same. So let's take a look at that. Um, so if we did a trade and reference as before, and we did trade LJ reference and then trade IJ reference just to compare, you'll see the only records that are returned, let's just run trade and reference here so we can see what's going on, are the ones where the key exists in both tables. So because I've got JP Morgan and IBM in both, I get those results returned. So the join that's performed is actually the same. So you'll see the matching rows, um, I get the same uh, result. I get the left-hand side first, then I get my supplementary column, columns from the right-hand side. Um, and the difference being that only the rows where there's a matching key is returned. So very straightforward. Um, and again, similar to, I think, um, the kind of normal regular SQL version of an inner join. Okay, so have a go with this exercise. Um, there's two exercises here just on that. Um, and let's move on and look at a different kind of join. And it's one of our bitemporal joins in Q. So again, we're seeing this word bitemporal, which means related to time. Um, and we're seeing it in relation to joins. So we've got two bitemporal joins in Q, as of, which we're going to show now. Um, and then window join, which is covered in our advanced course, but also covered in detail on our code.kx.com website. So let's look at as of join. So um, the kind of name suggests as of, we're looking for um, rows as of a particular time. And this is a very common join used in the finance industry. So the, the common use case would be the, answering the question, what time did this trade happen at? And what was the latest price you had at that time? So you're getting that prevailing price um, as of a specific trade execution time. So doing these kind of bitemporal joins or joins around time is one of the most powerful and unique features of the KDB technology. Um, so let's have a look at the as of join. So it's also called AJ um, and the syntax looks different to our left join and our inner join. So we've got these square brackets. We know this is functional syntax. So we can't use the infix notation we've seen above. Uh, we must have AJ, then square brackets. And we have three parameters. The first one being our list of columns to match on, um, where your first one here is going to be your exact match. Um, and then if you pass a time column, that's going to be the one that's doing the time lookup. And then we're passing two tables. And as before, the first one you should pass is the one you want the majority of data from, and then the second date table should be your sub supplementary data. So let's have a look at some example tables to better explain this. So we've got a trade and our quote table, and we've got the time and sim column in both. In our quote table, we've got ask and bid, and then in our trade table, we've got the price and size. So we're gonna do our as of join here, and we're gonna say our columns to match on, so the exact match will be happening on sim, and then we're gonna pass our trade column then we're going to pass our trade table first, which is this one here. And then we're going to pass our quote, which is up here. So our trade uh, table here, the first row is um, JP Morgan, which happened at 9.30. And this was my price and size. So what's going to happen is the lookup will be first done on JP Morgan. So we'll be looking up for the Sims where we've got JP Morgan. So we've got two rows for that, this one and this one. And at 9.30, the latest one that had happened at that point was this first row. So obviously this was 9.32, which is later. And that's why I get the 30.23 and the 30.2 ask and bid joined on. Then the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to look up for Apple. Um, I've got two records for Apple. And then again, this one here happened after 9.31. So it's going to return this here result at 9.29. So you'll see I get 40.2 and 40.19 added on here. OK, so we're determining basically the prevailing quote um, for every single trade in the table. Now, you might notice here that the time column is the one that's kept from the trade table. Um, if for some reason you want this joint to perform the same thing, but instead of having the time from trade, you wanted to keep this time from the quote, you could just use the variation of AJ, which is AJ0. And you see now I get the time from quote returned. And the, the join that's actually happening is the exact same. It's just the time column will be my um, second table rather than my first. What you could also do if you wanted both time columns to be persisted would just be to duplicate the time column in one of your tables. So if we take the quote table and we select the time, sim, bid and ask, and then also just duplicate the time from the quote table. 
again. And you'll see we now have our join happening again, but now we have the time from the trade and the time from the quote. And that can be nice to make sure and just visually check, is this doing what it's expected to do? So has the time from the quote table, is it something that um, is close to my time in the trade table? Um, and then especially for lookups, when you've got um, times down to your milliseconds, you'll be able to see um, exactly which one was picked up. Okay. So that's our as of join. Um, again, it's very powerful join in queue. A lot of users get a lot of utility out of it. Um, just know to use the as of join, you need to pull your data into memory. So if you've got trade and quote tables on disk um, over multiple days and you might want to run an as of join, you would put your as of join into a function and then run that over the multiple days. Um, we do have another bitemporal join. So there's two, as mentioned above, the window join. Um, so I won't go into it in this module in too much detail, but just to say it does what it sounds like it does. So the as of join, you get the latest um, results as of a certain time, whereas with the window join, you can aggregate results over a particular window. So over a bucket. So if you're interested in the average prices um, in a certain you know number of hours or days, the window join would allow you to join that on. Okay, um, so have a go with this exercise, just testing um, your knowledge on the as of join. Um, and that brings us to our um, conclusion of our joins module. Now, this is just an introduction to joins, as I've mentioned a few times. Um, so we have just covered um, some of the, the most common joins. Um, so we looked at using comma operator, so doing um, simple joins, and then also doing that with each both to do our pairwise kind of joining. And then we've seen how we can do joins with the key join. So our left join, inner join, and as of join. Um, but we do have more joins covered um, both on code.kx.com and as well in our advanced course. Okay, so you can head over to our exercises as before, and you'll be able to try out some of those examples in more detail um, there. So have a go with those, um, and I will see you in our next module, hopefully very soon.